Sweden is changing. You can see it from the moment you arrive. For the first time in a generation, on this short journey across the water from Denmark, customs officers are checking all passengers' passports. This is all part of a borderless Europe, of course, but look, signs of visible change. The barriers are up. I've come to Malmo, a quiet city on Sweden's southern coast, expanding fast. Down the generations, it's been an entry point for many seeking asylum, but it's never seen an influx like this. Sweden opened its doors last year. Per capita, it was like the UK welcoming more than one million new arrivals in the space of just 12 months. For many here, that generosity of spirit is just part of being Swedish. But the influx of such huge numbers has forced a national debate between those who say Sweden must help and those who question if it still can. For the National Migration Agency, it's a simple issue of logistics. And still, every day, new arrivals come here, hoping to find a home. Right now we have uh, about 180,000 people in our accommodations, uh, all over Sweden, of course. Uh, and that's a lot of pressure on the system because we can't find new accommodations, actually. So if we were to see the same thing happen uh, in the next coming months or the, this coming year, it, uh, we won't be able to solve it, actually. What will you do? Well, that's, that's the question. Uh, do we have to put people on the street? What will happen? It's hard to say. It's a heartbreaking dilemma for a country so proud of its history of open arms. Malmo is a remarkably diverse city. Almost a third of the population here was born outside Sweden. It's been welcoming immigrants for generations. But now that openness, that liberalism is being tested to the limit. There is a growing pressure here, politically and logistically. Conscience versus capacity. Everyone here is wrestling with it. Is that yeah. an important part of being Swedish, this liberal, open approach, this welcoming approach that you've always had yes, to incomers? Yes, we, we are proud of it, very much. Is it going to be able to continue? I don't think that we can take more. Do you worry about the future? Yes, definitely, especially for my kids. Especially for my kids. Not for me. But for my kids. Why? What do you fear? Because he's going to change the uh, the whole uh, atmosphere. He's going to change. He's going to it's going to be more rough, and uh, I don't know. That fear of the unknown is sending a chill through this warm-hearted country. We drove out into the small towns where a new political party is trading on that changing the landscape here. The Sweden Democrats have gone from a far-right fringe movement into a serious mainstream force, and they predict the tension will boil over. But I think we might get there if this doesn't stop immediately. Blood on the streets? Yeah, I think so. Culturally, they're very far apart from us. They see society differently. They, they view women differently. They see democracy differently. They have completely different customs and, uh, and cultures. Are you racist? Is your party no, racist? No, we're not racist. The Social Democrats and the Moderates are now doing our policies. I mean, they've been calling us racists for years now. But they're doing our policies. They're closing the borders. They're putting up checks on the borders, just as we have said we should. Now they're doing it. Does that mean now they're the racist? Because that's what they've been saying about us for all these years. Swedish liberals are forming their own new groups in a bid to counter that move to the right. In the neighboring village, I met Kristin and Matthias, both desperately concerned at what's happening in a country that seems to be polarizing fast. Hello. Hello. We have a coffee. Thank you. Yes. Hard to recognize myself because this is not the Sweden that I know of. Uh, it's happened so fast uh, during the last few months since the government changed direction. How do you feel when you see border guards boarding trains and monitoring arrivals 
from Denmark into Sweden for the first time in half a century. The first time I saw it, actually, I, I cried. I knew this. I knew this was going to happen on this particular journey. I expected it, but I couldn't sort of... I wasn't prepared to how I would feel emotionally. I was actually ashamed. I was ashamed of Sweden, and uh, I thought, I just wanted to do something, but what could you do? Public opinion certainly seems to be shifting, and the authorities are moving with it. The Swedish government has hardened its line on this. It's now proposing to deport 80,000 failed asylum seekers. That's half the number of people who came to this country last year. But while that might please some people politically, practically, it's a very different proposition. The actual process of rounding these people up and physically repatriating them would take years, if it ever happens at all. Back outside the migration agency, I met a group of Palestinians from Gaza, huddled round the fire on a cold night. They want to stay in Sweden, but they've had their applications rejected. Now they're in limbo. There's no sign of them being forced out, but there's no future for them here. So it's not allowed to me and my wife to go to school. So four years, we did not learn about one, one more, one Swedish word. In four years? In four years. Except, hey, hello. We hear a, a good things about Sweden, that they are uh, caring about the humanity, they give the rights for the refugees, and uh, a good country to live, actually, in peace. But they've seen the dark side of this country, too. They tell me they've been attacked and intimidated during their time here. But still, they keep their faith in Sweden and its people. You know, you cannot uh, guarantee all of people they are good, actually. Definitely there are some bad people, even from us. There is some people bad, there is some bad people also. You cannot uh, guarantee the, all of people, you know. But still, after your experience here, do you think Sweden still has a, a big heart? Sure, yeah. We hope. <laughs> Even those who are allowed to stay don't have it easy. 90% of the residents in the sprawling Malmo suburb of Rosengard are from immigrant families. Many don't speak Swedish, and the unemployment rates here are among the highest in the country. It's hardly a shining example of successful integration. This boxing gym offers youngsters from the tough neighborhood a chance to channel their frustrations. Come on, box. Don't listen at me. Dallas has reared some champions in the 40 years he's been running this facility. And in this young man, he reckons he's found a genuine world beater. You see something extra special? I feel more than extra special. When, when, when he came, he told me, I'm going to be world champion. And I'm going to win all the competition, best boxer. And he did. Daniel arrived in Sweden last summer. Aged just 14, he made the dangerous journey across Asia and Europe alone after fleeing the Taliban in Afghanistan. He has no idea what's become of his family, but he's focused on his future. What are you going to do with your life? What's your ambition now? But my ambition was I was being world champion in boxing. I love very much boxing. I want to be a uh, good for Sweden. They help me. Then I want to be a world champion from from Sweden. Yeah. You think you will be one day? Yeah, inshallah. He is one man with big ambitions, but there are 160,000 others here who all want to make their name in a country that's changing fast. <laughs>